we're talking about boning today. For corsets. Okay, so before I get started, I'm gonna put that same little disclaimer that I did last time. This whole series is about modern corset sewing. It's not about historical so corset sewing, so um, I'm just here to show you what the different products are and tell you why they're different, how they act, and then you can make the best decision for you which bones are best for your corset. All right, the first one we're gonna talk about is the spiral steel bone. Now, the spiral steel bone, it bends this way and it also bends this way. So it is your most flexible kind of boning. Uh, it's really great for dance wear because of that. Um, you can absolutely use it for corsetry, but if you are using steel boning for anything that is overbust, um, I would recommend um, putting, like mixing your boning up with something a little bit more rigid if you are holding up anything more than say like a C cup. Uh, because they're not, they, they don't have a ton of rigidity and a ton of support. What they're great at is if you are a dancer, um, or if you're wanting to make like a waist cincher or something that you want to be able to move in, but then once your body straightens up again, these will pull the garment flat and have it resting nicely against your body. These are galvanized, so they do have a zinc coating on them. So they're not really gonna be prone to rust, though it is still recommended that if you use them that you dry clean your garment. Obviously, for any corset, like don't ever, ever put them in the washing machine. Um, feel like I shouldn't have to say that, but I'm going to anyways. Uh, but yeah, so you don't have to worry if, if you are using steel boning, um, if you're sweating next to it or something like that, like it's not gonna rust through. Um, but yeah, it is still recommended that you dry clean only. Another nice thing about this boning is because of the holes, you can absolutely sew through it. So there are some corseting techniques and flossing and stuff where you might want to be able to do that. The next one we're going to talk about is sprung steel boning. Um, this is obviously a lot more rigid. It does bend forwards and backwards and not side to side at all. Um, you shouldn't ever be able to just like fold it in half and it should have really good recovery when you let go of it if you're moving it. Um, this has some, some benefits to it, but it also has some drawbacks. Um, I, to me, if you're going to be using something, um, that is this rigid, it's good to mix it with also plastic bones, which we'll get into in a second. And also, oops, hang on, grab another one. I don't want to crawl under my table right now. You can mix these with plastic bones, or you can mix these with the spiral steel bones, which we just looked at. Um, these are great. You will see them in busks. Busks come in many different shapes. Um, this is a pretty basic busk. So this would um, be your closure at the front of your corset. And having something that is this strong right at the front of your garment is going to make sure that you get a really um, nice smooth corset down the front. Another great place to use your sprung steel bone is at the back by your eyelets. It's gonna give, again, really nice rigidity so that you, the back of your corset isn't um, changing shape at all and when you lace up your corset, it just it holds its shape really nicely and looks gorgeous. Um, other than that, if I'm going to add a, sta a steel bone, and this is just me, anywhere else, I'm gonna put it right on the side of my corset, particularly if it is for um, somebody with a really large chest. It just gives you that little bit of extra stability. So that gives you sort of four points on the body where you have really nice rigidity and then you can feel free to put something a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more lightweight in the rest of the bones around the corset. If you did do a corset completely in sprung steel bones, it's going to be very straight. It's gonna, it's gonna be a tube. You're not gonna really, you're not gonna have any shape. So, bear that in mind like it's just it, it's it's not going to give you like a nice hourglass waist there's just it's that's not what's going to happen with that corset and as you can see it is white um this is coated in a nylon paint so this also is not something that is going to rust you can absolutely have your corset with um sprung steel bones dry cleaned but you can also just hand wash them their tips are dipped in just handle dip um, that you can get at the 
hardware store. If you are ever gonna cut this, you're gonna need some good tin snips and make sure you have something to coat the edges with. Um, some people will use nail polish, but I do find that um, sometimes it, it will still like wear out or chip off or something, so. Now, this is probably the boning that is most readily available to everybody in most fabric stores. It comes in this sew-on casing that's made out of like an interfacing um, fabric. The intention there is that you can use it on the inside of a dress and just sew this casing right into your dress. Um, and then your boning is on the inside. I'll be honest, I've never ever used the casing that comes on it and typically I order my boning with just boning. I do find that the regular fabric stores, they don't have as much variety when it comes to the thickness of their plastic boning. Um, and just there, there's just not as much variety so if you need something that's a little bit stronger like they might have two gauges of it and that's kind of it it'll absolutely work but i do recommend like this is quite thin gauge and as i was saying before i would recommend m mixing this with uh, a sprung steel bone um similar to that plastic boning um there is this is german um plastic boning and this i bought at farthingales um i had to order it because they're in Ontario. So especially if you're from Canada, I do find that Farthingales is like reasonably priced. I'm not affiliated, that's just my experience. Um, I have also ordered, um, I think my coiled steel bones, I, where did I order those from? Of course, Making Supply, same place as Bra Making Supply. Um, but yeah, so this is a German plastic. It is coiled up and I don't want you to worry about that. Yes, it is like if I if I cut these, it would it would open a bit, but it would still be spiraled. That's okay. It's okay that this stuff takes a shape. You actually want it to. Um, it's easy enough. Put it in hot water, and you can straighten the bones out again. But where traditional bones, and if you didn't know, the reason why we call bones bones is because they used to be made out of whalebone, and whalebone could be steamed. Um, to take another shape it could also just like take the shape of the body as the corset was worn more and so when you hear about people talking about like breaking in a corset they're talking about getting the corset to take the shape of their body and so this will do the, that this is really kind of plastic bones are the closest in our modern world that we can really get to whalebone in terms of how it behaves. It's not exactly the same, but it's it's pretty close. And so the German plastic boning, it has ridges in it, much like the stuff from the fabric store. And you can actually sew through this, which for some, you know, flossing patterns and stuff that you might do, let me remind you what flossing is. So for flossing, which is this little uh, stitch detail at the ends of the bones, which just helps the longevity of your corset, helps keep the bones from popping through your fabric, um, you might want to be able to put a stitch through the bone. Now, synthetic whalebone is more opaque. It doesn't have the ridges. You cannot sew through it. It's a little bit um, stronger in the quality of plastic. It's easier to cut if you have tin snips. Um, you'll really be hurting your hands if you're trying to do a bunch of these with scissors. But whatever kind of plastic bone you're using, you can use a nail file to to take any edges off of your bones because you don't want to leave little corners. Um, and we'll get more into technique and stuff like that later. I also, if I'm outside and I can just light a candle and it's well ventilated, I just melt the ends of my bones and they get kind of like a little bead at the end and that works fine for me. But your synthetic whale bone is, is basically just another plastic boning. Now, some of you are gonna hate me for bringing this up, but, I mean, we can't be totally inclusive for not talking about good old zip ties. Zip ties are in a pinch. They work. Um, you can get them in various thicknesses and lengths. They're very cheap. I think I got that bag at a liquidation place. I think it was like $1.99 for a whole bag and there's maybe like 20 or more in there. Um, what I do find is that this stuff won't shape as well as your like synthetic whalebone and stuff like that. So, you know, if you're doing an underbust or something like that and you're doing a Halloween costume and it's not something that you're going to want to wear a whole lot, I mean, whatever, go ahead, use, use these because they're cost effective and they do the job. But if you're trying to make 
something with a lot of shaping, something that you are wanting to wear a lot. Um, I don't know. It's not my favorite because it just, like I said, it doesn't shape as nicely, I find. Another kind of boning that you may see around is um, ridge lean or there is like ones that are like ridge lean. And the best way to describe this is it's actually like small plastic sticks that have been woven together. It's much easier to sew through. However, I don't recommend this for corsets. It just doesn't have the stability. If you're doing um, you know, an outfit or a costume or something that you want something to have a little bit of extra rigidity or you're, you're trying to you know, do some cool motion stuff with fabric. Cool, yeah, use this stuff. Great for millinery if you're making hats, sure. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't, I would not use this for corsets. Even though you're gonna find it under corseting supplies in a lot of places, you're gonna find it with the regular plastic bones. Not recommended. Another way that you can uh, firm up a corset without using boning is by using cording. Um, cording is put in channels similarly the way boning is only you would actually put your cording in and then stitch beside it uh, and it just thickens up the fabric if you have like consecutive strips of it it can give you a really nice hold to your corset and for that you just use piping cord or in a pinch again if you're going on the cheap and it's a halloween costume or something and you're not really too plussed about it and you you don't mind very thin bones you can absolutely use uh, butcher's twine. <laughs> Just make sure you pre-shrink it if you're ever gonna wash this thing. Well, there we go. I hope that I have sort of demystified the all the different kinds of boning that you will see if you go on to order boning for your corset. Um, I really, it just, it, unless you are really, really wanting to do historical sewing, don't get hung up in what kind of bones are right for what corset. If you're just making a corset to wear as your modern self, pick the bones that are going to work for you. My personal favorite um, for like a full corset is sprung steel at the front and back and plastic all the rest of the way around. If I'm doing a waist cincher, then I'll use the coiled steel. That's just me. Um, it might be something that you have to make more than one corset and play around with it, and that can be fun too. That's all I have for you this week. Next week we're going to talk about choosing your fabric for your corset. I will see you then.